invented between 1500 and 2000 years ago in Southeast Asia, independent of European influence. Fire pistons were first discovered within the European world by Spanish travelers who happened within the area. They proved the world over that the Southeast Asian ingenuity drove the fire piston and ultimately the steam engine and the cars piston that we know today. A fire piston works by compressing the particles that we find naturally in air. Under an immense amount of pressure, forcing those particles to collide and creating a reaction, uh, a mini explosion that gets hot enough to ignite the charred material that you put within its tunnel. Fire pistons have their own set of variables that must be met exactly to work. If you don't compress the air fast enough, you won't raise the temperature. Uh, if you let humidity hit your charred material inside the tunnel, inside the cavity there, it will raise the temperature that the fire piston needs to get to just to ignite it. Um, if natural, the humidity found in natural air becomes so much that it inundates the, uh, the area around it, it will also affect its ability to create that small explosion. These things, of course, like humidity, can be handled with good tinder control. As you find tinder throughout the area, and especially on a wet day like today, you're going to want to put it inside of its own satchel and keep it warm and dry. Don't close it off, like if you're using a, a water bag, a leather bag, or even a Ziploc bag. Don't close it off because then humidity is going to build up inside of it as your body raises its temperature. Leave a small gap so that air can escape, the moisture can escape, but keep it close to your body to... Uh, start that reaction so that moisture will rise out of the bag or out of the container itself. Good tinder control is an essential part of every single fire that you're going to make. Make sure that you get your fine fibrous material. Uh, if using a fire piston, make sure that you have a charred material and that can be found naturally in the form of charring some, uh, charring some punk wood. Uh, you can char a piece of clothing that you have on you at the time, making every fire that you make last to the next one. Now this fire piston right here can be found at campfirepiston.com for around $30 shipped out. If you take good care of this, just like any of your gear, it's going to last generations. If you take good care of an axe, it's going to last to you know, your grandson or even further. If you take good care of your fire piston, they are built well enough, and if you get one that's built well enough, it's going to last generations to come. The things that will need to be replaced in this are the o-ring. You'll see right here, that's what creates the vacuum. Uh, that o-ring around its little cavity there is what creates an airtight seal within this piston. You're going to know if your O-ring needs replacing because you're going to hear it. You can hear that pop telling you that this vacuum is working just fine. Now the cavity inside there, that's where you're going to put your charred material. You're going to want to pack it not too densely so that you compress the fibers in your charred material, but pack it pretty deeply so that you don't have just a little speck in there. Once you do that, again, keep it out of the natural air's humidity. It's been raining here for the last couple of days, so everything was very moist. I had to work very quickly just to get it right. As you put it in there, no humidity is going to get inside of it. And when you go to compress the fire piston, you're going to want to act like you're breaking it. You're going to want to compress it all the way down to the bottom. Only at great speed and pressure is what's going to create, uh, what's going to force those particles together, creating that hotter temperature that's going to ignite your charred material. Now don't think that you have to buy a fire piston. They can be made at home. It is our experience that it takes a lot of trial and error. Uh, we have worked for weeks in some cases, almost solely on that project, just to get it just right, because it takes an ingenuity to get the tunnel just right, to get the vacuum seal just right, so that no air can escape once you're compressing it. So it's with that that we find so much respect for the indigenous people of Southeast Asia as they learn this, possibly over generations, working on it, toiling at it to get their pistons just right. And as you can see, it became a, uh, a very, uh, I don't want to say prideful, but, but I guess something that they were proud of, something that they at least cherished very closely because the indigenous people would wear their fire piston around their neck. And this was their main way of making fire. And they would uh, have a fire satchel, a tinder satchel, and then wear their piston around their neck. And when it was time to make fire, it became an almost, uh, long traditional uh, and respectful ordeal where they would sit it out. They would sit their fire area out, get their tinder ready, have their charred material, have their fire piston, and they would go through the steps very methodically. And that's something that's important that we can all learn from about fire making because they knew back then and we know today in a survival situation or in a long-term disaster or even if you're in an area where the modern ways of life aren't, a, aren't 
don't have such an impression upon everyone. You need to have fire. Fire is going to cook your food, clean your water, disinfect your tools. It is really a signal for help. It is really the thing that modern life is made out of. So be methodical about your fire creation. Get your tinder bundle ready. Have your fine fibrous material right at the very top. Step down your stick so that you go from pencil lead to pencil size to pinky size to wrist size and just you know follow those steps so that you create a good fire every time. Uh, if you don't know whether your sticks are dry enough, if you don't have the materials right, make sure you make a fire teepee. Um, it's these things that have been lost in generations past because fire has become so readily available with lighters and ignition materials and things like that. So it's with that that we have such a great respect for the people who learned how to do it over years and years, possibly generations. If you want to get your hands on a fire piston like this, look down in the links below. Uh, by all means, once you get one, try to make it yourself. That's going to give you a great respect, just like it did me, on what it takes to actually make this possible. If there's more things that you guys want to see us try and research, uh, try out before you put your hard-earned money into it, please let us know. We'll work, to, we'll work with companies to get our hands on it so that we can try it and really put it through the ringer. You know, put it through a, a long-term a long duration process so that you know whether it's worth your investment of time and money. Just send us an email, fullspectrumsurvival at gmail.com. Let us know what you want to see and we'll do the work for you. As always, thank you to our Patreon members who make these crisis tips possible. Without you, they wouldn't be possible. So thank you all for what you do. From Kelly and I to you and yours, stay safe and keep watching.